Hi amazing people, welcome to Christianity Over Islam with Sam Shemon and on today's episode of this amazing debate, Sam Shemon debate a Muslim on Bible corruption and the way Muhammad died. Just watch this amazing video to get more truth. Come oh, on, yeah, I thought you were about to me for a second there. Move it buddy, come on. Come on. Alright, come on. What's the topic? Come on. Okay, you got your Quran on you. Yes, I got it. Open up to chapter 2 of the Quran. What translation are you reading? Uh, Sahi International. Oh, yeah. Well, hopefully you know the Arabic because you're going to correct it with me. But go ahead. Go to chapter 2. Read verses 40 to 44. Read it slowly and out loud because people are watching you. Forty to forty-four. Yeah, slowly, so we can follow you and pay attention, understand what you're reading. Go ahead. Do you order righteousness of the people and forget yourselves while you recite the scripture? Then we're going to start reason? at verse forty again. Chapter two, verse forty to forty-four. Start oh, at forty. 40. Yeah. O children of Israel, remember my favor which I have bestowed upon you, and fulfill my covenant, my covenant upon you, that I will fulfill your covenant from me and be afraid of only me. And believe in what I have sent down, confirming that which is already with you, and be what is not the Arabic word for confirming? Me. Confirming what? Read that part. Confirming what again? Confer confirming that which I already that which is already with you. What is the verb for confirming? Do you know? Musabdipon. Good. So don't forget, sadaka is the root. So keep that in mind. Confirming that which is already with you. Now keep reading. <clears throat> and be not the first to disbelieve in it, and do not exchange my signs for a small price, and fear only me. Yep. And do not mix the truth with falsehood, or conceal the truth while you know it. Okay. So and establish. What? Okay. <clears throat> when you conceal something, that means it's in your possession, right? Yes. Okay, so read that part again. Conceal what? Do not conceal what? Oh, and do not wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah, and do not mix the truth with falsehood or conceal the truth while you know it. Okay, so don't forget what you said. Conceal means you have something, you're concealing it. Okay, now all the way, all the way to forty four. When you're done to forty four, let me know. <clears throat> And establish, and establish prayer and give zakat and bow with those who bow. Mm -hmm. Do you do you order righteousness of the people and forget yourselves while you recite the scripture? Then will you not reason? So you recite what to the people? Read that again. Do you what? That was 44. Read that again. Do you order righteousness of the people and forget yourselves while you recite the scripture? Then will you not reason? So don't forget what you read in 41. And now 44, confirming what is already with you, and you recite the scripture. So don't keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. But now I want you to go. So you're in the same chapter. You're in chapter 2. I want you to read 89 for me. And when there came to them a book from Allah confirming that which was with them, although... Although they used to pray for victory against those who disbelieve, but then when they when there came to them that which they recognized, they disbelieved in it. So the curse of Allah will be on the disbelievers. Okay, read the first part again. When came what to them again exactly? What came to them? A book from Allah confirming that which was with them. Okay, so like another reference to what which is with them. What about verse ninety one of the same chapter? Read ninety one for me. And when it is said, believe in what Allah has revealed, they say, we believe only in what was revealed to us. And they disbelieve in what came after it, while it is the truth confirming that which is with them. Not was with say, them, is with them, right? That which is with them. That, that, that which is with them, my bad. Okay, that sorry. which is with them. Good, good. I say, just want you to see that. Go ahead, finish. Finish the verse. Then why did you kill the prophets of Allah before if you are indeed believers? Okay, but so you're saying confirming what they have at the time, not some distant passage. I want you to keep that in mind when I ask you the yes. question. So now <clears throat> read for me. <clears throat> you read 89, you read 91, read for me 97. 
verse 97. Say, whoever is an en enemy to Gabriel, it is none but he who has brought the Quran down upon your heart. By Allah's, by permission of Allah, confirming that which was before it and as guidance and good tidings for the believers. Excellent. So that which was before, that which is with them, the book that they have, this Quran confirms. What about 101? Verse 101. And when a messenger from Allah came to them, confirming that which was with them, a party of those who had been given the scripture through the scripture of Allah behind their backs, as if they did not know. Okay, read 101 one more time slowly. And when a messenger from Allah came to them, confirming that which was with them. What is with party, them, not right? Is with them. So it's not yeah. something. Okay, so I can have more, but we're going to go surah by surah. First time, this is going to be a gauge of how accurately you read and how honest you are in what you read. So here's my question. <clears throat> this is obviously, you believe Muhammad is a prophet. So this is talking to your prophet to address his contemporaries. And what you just read is that his Quran confirms what is with them. So answer the question, what did they have at that time? And who was them? Who is he talking to? They, they had a portion of the book. Yeah, because the Quran is supposed to be the other portion. So, but you didn't answer my question. What did that, they that have is, with no, them? That is an uh, interpretation from your part. Okay, we're going to try it this again. Go back to go back to 41. Don't play your games with me because I'm going to school you. Go back to 41. See, this is, I knew you're going to play games because that's what you forced to do. And that's why I said this is going to be a gauge of how honest you are. You're going to be dishonest like your prophet. But read 41 again, one more time. We're and believe go. in what I have set down, confirming that which is already with you. Okay, and be so, not okay that's wait, 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 wait. Slow yeah. down. I know you're getting nervous. Breathe. Confirming what? Confirming that which is already with you. Okay, that's number one. I'll go back to 80, uh, 89 again. And read 89 again. Okay. And then there, when, when there came to them a book from Allah confirming that which was with them. Okay, with them, also. right? With them, right? Yes. Okay, now read 91 again, see, because I have to walk you through this three, four times before you finally get honest. Read 91. All right, all right, one second. And when it is said to them, believe in what Allah has revealed, they say we believe only in what was revealed to us. Keep reading. And they just, what came after it, while it is the truth confirming that which is with them. So which is with them, with them. So don't play games with me because yes. I want you to read 113, verse 113. The Jews say the Christians have nothing true to stand on and the Christians say the Jews have nothing to stand on. Although they both recite the scripture. Okay, so now I the, just busted you and what you said, it's my interpretation. It says here they recite the kitab, the book, not just the portion of it. So don't play games with me. Let's see how honest you are to your own book. What did they have with them that your prophet confirmed? What was it that they had with them? A portion of the book. Okay, now 113, show me where it says portion. You just read 113. What do they recite? Uh, no, no, don't give me your interpretation. Don't give me your interpretation like you don't guys. Cherry pick, don't cherry pick certain What verses book you have were they reading? The what book? I know you can't be more honest than your prophet. What book were they reading? It's in front of your eyes. Even a blind man can read 113. Which means okay, a portion say, of the book. No, not in 113. Of read 113 in Arabic. I'm going to embarrass you and your prophet if you keep lying. What does it say in 113? You want me to read in Arabic? Read it and tell me where it says portion in 113. Okay, where does it say portion of the kitab in that verse? That's because you're supposed to read the whole Quran What in book were they reciting? The now I'm going to give you another chance to answer the question. What book were You're they reciting, the Jews and Christians at the time of the false prophet? The book. 
What is it? Don't don't play stupid and try to be illiterate like your prophet. What was the book historically that they had that they were reading? The Jews or the or the Christians? Which one? It says in front of you that they both read the book. So what are you asking me? Which one? It says Jews and Christians. Okay. Do you know Arabic? It says Yatlun al Kitab. It doesn't say They're reciting or reading. Yeah, yeah. Don't play games with me. What are they reciting? What book? They are re reading the book. It says, I'm not going to add to the verses. What it's book? Uh, understand what Arabic. book? What book? If you can find me within this verse where it says Torah and Injil. Yeah, I'll find it for you. Don't worry. Don't get it. I'll get there. I'll okay, show it to you. And I will so get there to you. I'll get it to you and I'm going to embarrass your prophet because every time you say something stupid, I'm going to embarrass your prophet. So if you love your prophet, don't act stupid and don't avoid questions. If you love him, because I'm going to embarrass your prophet and it's being recorded. So now... You're not going to tell me what book? It says Yatsun al-Kitab. Okay, what book was that? Historically, if you're in a class and your professor says, historically in the 7th century when your false prophet lived, what book were they reading historically? What's the answer? The alleged Torah. Alleged Torah. Okay, so now you said, but you just told me to show you where it says Torah, but you just answered it. So the Torah, right? Oh, you're right. Asking historically what was around in there is alleged. So what were they having in their hands? Do I need to bring in Sunan Abu Dawood to embarrass you further that it is the Torah? Do you want me to read Sunan Abu Dawood? Which which hadith? The Sunan Abu Dawood, the, the hadith from Abu Dawood. Do you know Abu Dawood, or I'm going to have to teach you about your hadith? Here, let it me get it for you. Hold on. Just the one where the Prophet confirms the alleged Torah. So. Your prophet was stupid because he confirmed the Torah. He didn't say alleged Torah, but you're saying alleged. So are you smarter than your prophet? Is he that stupid? Because no, 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 no. you're just telling me he's stupid. He's Can you show me where it says alleged Torah? Utu nasib means portion of the No, truth. we're not going to that. We're going to the Hadith, and it doesn't say Torah there. Let me play your game. Where does it say that portion is the Torah, the alleged Torah? See, you're, you, when you act stupid, you're going to get embarrassed. Okay. Read Surah Al Imran, chapter number three. Yes. If you read Surah Al Imran, you would your whole argument would okay, be Okay, then go to Surah Al Imran, read Ayah three and four. Let's embarrass you further. Go to Surah Al Imran, read chapter three, verses three and four. Since you wanted to go to Imran, let me embarrass you and your prophet a little more. Go to chapter, go to chapter three, three read three verses three and four. four. Are you ignoring read the three whole and four? To read three and four. I'll get to all your verses in three, and I'm going to further embarrass your prophet. Okay. Read chapter three, verses three and four. <laughs> Chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. I'm going to wait for you to read it. Chapter 3, verses 3 and 4. Okay. 3 and 4. He has sent down upon you the book in truth, confirming what was before it, and he revealed the Torah and the now gospel. Now read the Arabic. It doesn't say what was before it. Give me the literal translation of the Arabic. Are you talking about the word bain yaday, which you claim means Tran between No, hands, no, I don't claim anything. Translate. The words. Stop putting okay. words in my mouth. Okay, I'll, read, I'll read Hawaii. I'll read Hawaii than I No, right. but read, oh, yeah. translate it correctly. What's Baina Yadehi Yadehi? I mean, read it. Baina Yadehi literally means between the hands, but that okay. is not how it's used in the whole Quran. I you didn't ask you how it's used. I don't care how you think it's used. Translate the words literally in that text for me. Let's try it again. Okay. The whole, the whole verse, Nazala alayka al kitab means. Revealed unto you the book. What book? The truth. What book? The Quran. This is the okay. Quran now, see, I'm going to play your game. Where does it say Quran? I can show you another. No, 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 no! Don't run to another verse. That's what you did with me. You see, I'm going to play your game. I'm oh, going to embarrass okay, you with your wait, argument. Okay, you're going to ask me. This don't is the Quran. run okay, to I'll... another verse. What book was sent down to him? Show me where it says Quran. Are you saying? Say choose one verse and go off of that understanding. The ah, very next verse says so, uh, the Quran of the book. <laughs> no, it doesn't say the Quran next verse. Look, look, look at the very next verse, verse four, and he revealed the Quran. Wait, 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 wait. What did Read it say again? Wait, 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 wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What did it say? Read it again. The next verse is Okay, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. So you just thought that the book is the Quran when you just distinguish the book from the Quran, so you don't listen to yourself. And by the way, where does it say Quran again? In verse 4. Okay, hold on. Let's see that. Hold on, let's get there. And what does it say exactly? It says, Quran, you sure? Or do you want me to embarrass you in front of everyone? Reread it again. 
No, it Quran, which say, means Korean. No, it doesn't say Quran. It says Furqan. You see, you no, just exposed Quran, that you're a liar. Yeah, no, no, you said Quran. Where no, does no, it okay, say yeah, Quran? Okay, okay, wait. Slow down, slow down. Okay, slow down. This is what I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to tell you that if you go to another surah, it's going to say the Furqan is the Quran. And then so I'm going to like, show you another easy. surah where it says the Furqan was given to Musa, alayhi salam. See, I'm going to embarrass you for lying. You just said, and I got it recorded, you just said in front of everyone's hearing, the next verse says Quran, and I gave you more than one chance to save yourself from humiliating yourself and your prophet. I go, what did it say? Wait, wait, what did it say? But see, because in your arrogance and stupidity, you just humiliated your prophet. So now let's not play that game again. Since you wanted to play the game, portion of the book, portion of the book, and it doesn't say... I'm going to now use your own argument against you. Can you prove to me from verse 3 that the book that was sent down is the Quran and that it's talking to Muhammad? From verse verse 3? Yeah, can you do that? What book was revealed to Muhammad? Show me that it's speaking to Muhammad. Show me that it's speaking to Muhammad. How do you know it's speaking to Muhammad? Wait, 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 hold on. You don't you don't think when it says Nabi in the Quran it's talking to Muhammad? Who's Show it me. To? Don't assert. Prove it that this is speaking to Muhammad. You see? See, when you play that game, I'll embarrass hey, you because you won't be so able to... So when all the stories are... Okay, you want his name specifically in the Quran, that it's him. You show me that the book is referring to the Quran that's sent to Muhammad. See, I'm asking you a very simple question and you keep trying to tap dance. Can you show me that it's speaking to Muhammad and the book is the Quran from that verse? Can you? Yes or no? From this verse, you don't get the word Muhammad, you don't get the word Quran. Okay, so now, now let me explain to you why I'm doing this to teach you a lesson, to never make the stupid mistake of when I say, what is the book that was an answer to Jews? What well, doesn't say? Because you play that game, I'm gonna end up embarrassing you. So are you gonna now start being honest? I was being honest, man. No, you weren't. Because when I asked you, what was the book that the Jews had? It says the book, a portion of it. What was it? Uh, it says the book. And then I had to then tell you historically, if you're professor, See, if you're going to make me play these games, I'm going to end up embarrassing your prophets. Are you going to now be honest and answer honestly? I don't think you understand what I was trying to say. I understood you better than you think. But are you going to be now honest? Okay. So, no, no, no. Are you going to be I'm, honest I'm in this conversation? That when, I was, when I didn't say Torah specifically at that moment, what I was trying to say was, if you read the Surah Al-Imran, it says it gives clarification of what they had. Utu Nasib means a portion Friends, because in Christian. the context of the Quran, and I'm going to end up having to school you again, because the Torah, the Gospel, the Zabur, and the Quran, they're all considered to be portions of the book, so that <clears throat> taken as a whole, they're portions of the book. But each of them are also a book. I know how your Quran works and the language of your Quran, so don't play that game with me. Stop playing that game. You're not going to get far. So can we now proceed and be honest and have an honest conversation? Because the more you do this, the more you're going to get embarrassed. Yeah, sure. Okay, we can move on. We can move okay, on. Okay, so you, you, you understand. I know the language of the Quran better than you do. I know what portion of the book means in the Quran. Because <laughs> each one of those okay, books... I'm sorry, can but, I finish the point? But you believe Bain and Yadeh means literally between the hands. No, uh, I can't say you know Arabic better. Well, hold on. Okay. So if now I quote Muhammad Assad to show I'm right and that you're the liar, are you going to now begin apologize? He's not infallible. Neither are you. So why should I take your opinion, a little kid wearing a tank top from Muhammad Assad, who is a scholar and a Jewish convert to Islam? So you're not infallible either. So what kind of stupid response? No, is no, that? okay. Should I tell you why you should take my... Well, no, I shouldn't take your opinion for anything. You're just a little kid. You need to learn. So let's stop the games. Now I'm going to ask you the question again. Right. What did your prophet confirm? What was it that the Jews had that your prophet confirmed? He confirmed what was the truth inside the Torah. Show me where it says Allegedly. he only confirmed the truth that was inside the Torah. Okay, let me, let me yeah, show get, you. Get there, because every passage is I'm going to turn it against your prophet. Like I said, when you answer dishonestly and stupidly, I'm going to punish your prophet. I'm telling you. So if you love your prophet, be careful what you say. So you want to see where, what do you want to find? No, what I said, what did he confirm? The passages that you read did not say he confirmed the truth that was in them. It says he confirmed what they had. Do we need to go over those verses again? Yeah, yeah, they confirmed what they had. They had what did they con the what did he confirm? What did they have? They had some of the scripture. They had some where, scripture. Where wow. does it say some of the scripture? It says confirm what they had. Why are you adding to the language of the Quran? Okay, oh, okay, let me, show, let me show, okay, let me go to Surah Al Imran, chapter number three, verse number. Hold on, let me find the verse. 
You need to even find the verse, huh? All right. Where it explicitly says that they hid the truth and they... Thank you. They so remember what I said it. earlier? That was in chapter 2, verse 44. But because you're, you're too nervous, you don't remember that. In 244, you read it. It says, concealing the truth that you know. Remember when I asked you that question? When you conceal something, no, does that, that mean you have it? Verse, not that okay, verse. but hold on. Wait, wait. Don't tap dance. If you hide something, how can you ha hide something you don't have? Can you hide something you don't have? You don't have? Can you hide something you don't have? No, you can't hide something. Unless, unless we're talking about oral tradition. So the book is oral tradition. You're getting stupider by every minute. You know that, right? How can you hide something you don't have? You can't hide something you don't have. So even the verse you're going to quote is going to now implode in your prophet's face. Because if they're hiding the truth, they can't hide the truth if they don't have the truth. You see how stupid you're so sounding are, now? Okay, so are you saying they can't hide something they do have? They could hide something they do have. That's what I'm... Oh, my God. They, oh, they can hide it. That's exactly my point. For them to hide the truth, that means they have to have it. Are you listening? Yeah, I'm listening to you. Okay. Listening. So whatever verse you quote, it's going to implode in your prophet's face. Because if they're hiding the truth, that means they have the truth. So that means they haven't corrupted the truth. Hello? So yeah, they, they have the truth, but okay. they hide it. What it is mean they the have, book they, they have? have all the truth. It doesn't mean they have all the truth. Where does it say they only have... A portion of the truth. Don't give me a portion of the book. Show me where it says oh, you only you have a portion what? of the truth. Okay, the book is the book is the truth. The okay. book is the truth. What, what book do they have? Let's try this again. You're wasting time and you're embarrassing Muhammad. What book did they have? Let's try this again. The, the Jews have the Torah. Okay. What did that Torah look like in the time of Muhammad? What did it look like? What was it? Give me the contents. You mean it, it vanished? Abracadabra, it's gone? They still had, I don't, I don't know exactly what, uh, what chapters they had and all the chapters and stuff. Okay, so you don't um, know. That's good. At least now you're getting a little more honest. Okay, now go to chapter three. Since you're in chapter three right now, you went to chapter three. Can you yeah. read verse 50 for me? Verse 50. Yeah. And I have come confirming what was before me of the Torah and to make lawful for you some of what was forbidden to you and i have come to you with a sign from your lord so fear allah and obey me okay who's speaking there according to your quran who's supposedly speaking uh nabi Isa. okay and what is he confirming what was before me of the torah and you know what before me means right in front of me before me look that chair is before me that table's before me, in front of me, meaning no, in my no, possession. No, 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 you got two different words for being a gay now. Okay, wait, wait. Now I'm going to let okay. Ibn Kathir say you're a liar like your prophet. I'm going to let Ibn Kathir correct you now. See, again, uh, when you act stupid, I'm going to end I'm telling you, it's not going to look good for you. If you're going to keep being dishonest, kid, you're going to get embarrassed. So let me just read what Ibn Kathir said. Because, again, Ibn Kathir is not a Christian. I'm going to let him tell you what this means because, see, I can't deal with dishonesty. I can't deal with people who lie. So I'm going to end up embarrassing your prophet every time. Look, I've been warning you. I, I thought you love your prophet. Anytime you say something dishonest, anytime you say something that's deceitful, I will embarrass Muhammad. So if you love Muhammad, for his sake, stop lying and tap dancing. But I don't think you love him because you keep lying and I keep embarrassing you. Don't do this to your prophet. Don't do this to your prophet. Here it is. Ibn Kathir. Are you ready? Are you ready? Did I lose you? What happened? You ran? I can't hear you. You're muted. Fix your mic. Something wrong. Call me back then. Hold on. Hello? Hello? Now we can hear you. Okay. I'm going to read Ibn Kathir. You ready? I was going to say something, though. Okay, let me read him first. Are you ready? Okay. okay. Yeah, come on, read it. Ibn Kathir on 350. And what you just read. The Torah is the book that Allah sent down to Musa, son of Imran, 
while the Injil is what Allah sent down to Isa, son of Maryam, peace be upon them. And Isa memorized both books, affirming the Torah and upholding it. Okay, did you hear what he said? Yeah. Okay, now, I want you to read for me chapter 5, because I'm going to read what Ibn Kathir says about chapter 5, verse 46, Surah Al-Ma'idah. Go to chapter 5, verse 46. Chapter 5, verse 46. Yeah, okay. And we sent following in their footsteps, Jesus, the son of Mary, confirming that which came before him in the Torah, and we gave him the gospel, in which was guidance and light, and confirming that which preceded it of the Torah as guidance and instruction for the righteous. Okay. I'm going to read Ibn Kathir, because if I tell you translate what it means, you're going to tap down. So let me read Ibn Kathir. Here it is on chapter 5. Let's read what he says about 46. Let's go there. Hold on. Uh, you know, I skipped his uh, page 46, but I'm going to get it for you. As I do that, go to chapter 61, verse 6, because I'm going to let Ibn Kathir explain what these means. But go to 61, 6. I'm going to get Ibn Kathir right now. All right. And mention when Jesus, the son of Mary, said, O children of Israel, Indeed, I am the messenger of Allah to you, confirming that which was before me of the Torah and bringing good tidings of a messenger to come after me, whose name is Ahmed. But when he came to them with clear evidences, they said, this is obvious magic. Now, I'm going to read what Ibn Kathir says about 61.6, and then I'm going to read what he says about 5.46. Okay, now here's 61, verse 6. This is what he says about 61, verse 6. You know, in fact, I have them all here. Hold on, sorry. Sometimes I don't even get my own numbering. All right, here goes. Meaning he believed in it and ruled by it. Meaning he adhered to the Torah, except for the few instances that clarify the truth where the children of Israel differed. Allah states in another ayah that <clears throat> Isa said to the children of Israel, so the scholar said that the Injil abrogated some of the rulings of the Torah. Okay, now, here's what he says about 61.6, what you just read. Isa said, the Torah conveyed the glad tidings of my coming, and my coming confirms the truth of the Torah. So, it says that Isa memorized the Torah, confirmed the Torah, even though he abrogated some of the commands of it, like the Quran abrogates some of its own commands. So my question now, in light of what you just heard me read, my question now is, what Torah did Jesus confirm and memorize that was, at that time, read by the Jews and Christians? What was the Torah? It may have been the actual legit Torah at that time. I don't know about it. Okay, I don't know. So and maybe years ago before it was okay okay so good you said it may have been right good may, may have, have been. been all right since we found the dead sea scrolls in 1947 which are copies of the books of the bible the old testament with the exception of esther they didn't find esther yet and that was written about 200 to 100 years before the time jesus was born you just admit in front of everyone everyone just heard you that he confirmed the torah at that time he memorized it, even though you don't know what it is. We know what it is because of history and archaeology. You, you know, you just ended up admitting Jesus confirmed the Old Testament I have today because it's identical to what he had, he had at that time because of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So now what do you do with that, friend? And I'm going to get to Muhammad confirming the Torah. But what do you do with that now? Okay. Are you there? Okay, so... The Dead Sea Scrolls is one. Can you see me? Yeah, I hear you. The Dead Sea Scrolls are Hello? like. Yeah, we hear you, man. Come on. Hello? I'm sorry about that. My phone is like dying right I don't know if it's about to die or something, but I can't see nothing on, on my screen right it's now. It's okay. As long Anyways, as you can hear me, right? Yeah, we can hear you. As long as your connection, you got your connected so your phone doesn't die in the midst of conversation. So. Yeah, my phone, went, my phone went all black on me right now. It's Anyways, okay, I can still hear you. Hear you. Okay. So. So, the Dead Sea Scrolls, when was it found? 1947, but these are and dated... When did the carbon date back to? 200 to 100 years before Christ. Dude, just go to Chef Google to confirm it. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. So, now, so, that's the only scriptures that Jesus would have had. And even in the Gospels, when he's quoting the Torah, it is what we find in the Old Testament today. So, if your Quran is right, when was the Torah corrupted? 
saying Jesus memorized and confirmed the corrupted book? No, no, he may have had the actual the may the have, Dead Sea Scroll. May have is one uh, I found in Qumran. Yeah, my friend, it you're probably not getting it. Whatever you say, the Dead Sea Scrolls agree with the Old Testament manuscripts that were written before, after Jesus, before, during, and after Muhammad. There has been no changes to these documents to change the theology. Jesus would have confirmed what I had. This is simply a fact of history and archaeology. Don't do the tap dance. I haven't, I haven't done enough research on the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, so okay. that's a fall on my part. So Third. I have to do more research on it. So, okay, now, since Jesus confirmed that you still don't know, you need to do research. Go to six, chapter 6, verse 114, 115, please. 6, 114, 115. And then we're going to have a field day with your Quran and its Ahruf and its Qira'at. So... I hope you don't make that mistake of talking about varying readings because then you're going to destroy the Quran and embarrass <clears throat> your prophet again. So I hope you're a little smart in knowing what to say, what not to say. I'm trying to help you. So now in 6114, 6114 of the Quran, chapter 6, verse 114 to 115. Okay. Read that for me. Say, then it is other... Then is it other than Allah I should seek as judge while it is he who revealed to you the book explained in detail? And those to whom we previously gave the scripture know that it is sent down from your Lord in truth, so never be among the doubters. All the way to 115. And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. None can alter his words, and he is the, seer, the hearing, the knowing. Okay, none can do what? None can alter his words. Okay, now in the context, the words are referring to what? All right, guys, this is the part where this video gets more interesting. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, please do so and hit the notification button to be notified each time we post a new video. Let's get back to this video to get more details. And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled. In the so context, is what, about, what, what is that about? Yeah, it says the word of your Lord has been fulfilled. That's the context. Okay, in the context, the word of the Lord has been fulfilled. What is it a reference to? What is the word? If I have to spell it out, we're going to have problems, buddy. Kalima tu rabbik. Yeah, that I, means... I know what the Arabic uh, do. What is the word of your Lord? The word of, the, that's the command of the Lord. Now, see, this is why I said, I warned you, but you don't listen. I said, if you tap dance or lie or say something, then again, you're going to leave me no choice but to have to take it on your profit. But you don't listen. I'm going to read to you Ibn. Do you know Ibn Qayyim al Jawziyah? You know who he is? No. He is the student of Sheikh al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. Do you know Ibn uh, Taymiyyah? I think he's a Tafsir scholar, right? Yeah, okay. Well, Ibn Taymiyyah, well, I guess, all right. Anyway, Ibn Kathir was a student of Ibn Taymiyyah, and Ibn Qayyim, Ibn al Jawziyah, was his other student. And it's Ighadat al Lafin, volume two, sorry, the noise in the background. Let me tell you how the Muslim scholars of his time, and this is about 700 years after the death of your Prophet. 700 years later, he's, he's explaining the different views of the Muslims regarding the Torah. Okay? He says there's one group that says it's corrupted, that's the group that you want to be part of. Another group says there's only minor changes to the Torah, minor, very few minor changes, but basically we have the Torah as it is. And another group that says the Torah can never be corrupted. And this is what he says. I want to read it for you. Pay attention. It's not Christian. It's not Jewish scholars. This is Ibn Qayyim, the student of Ibn Taymiyyah, who's writing about 700 years after the death of your prophet. Notice the verses he's going to quote. One of them is 6115, which you just read. Which you tried to limit to <clears throat> the command of your Lord. Okay, here it is. On the other side, another party of the Hadith and Fiqh scholars said, These changes took place during its interpretation, not during the process of its revelation. Meaning they misinterpreted the text. They didn't change the text. They misinterpreted during its interpretation. Now watch this. This is the view of Abi Abdullah Muhammad bin Ismail al-Bukhari. Al Bukhari, who said in his hadith collection, No one, no one can corrupt the text by removing any of Allah's words from his books, but they corrupted it by misinterpreting it. Now, let me quote Al Bukhari again. 
I know, I know you know who Al Bukhari is. Sahih Al Bukhari. Yeah. Okay. He's quoting, Ibn Qayyim is quoting, this is what Al Bukhari believed. None of the books of Allah have been changed, none of them have been corrupted. They still remain, they're still preserved. So he quotes him No one can corrupt the text by removing any of Allah's works from his books, but they corrupted it by misinterpreting it. Al Razi agrees with this opinion. So Al Razi, another renowned commentator of the Quran, agrees with Bukhari's view: none of the books of Allah can be changed, none of them can be corrupted. Now, let me go on and see. He quotes the hadith from Abu Dawood. Abu Dawood narrated in his collection that Ibn Amr, Ibn Umar said, a group of Jewish people invited the Messenger of Allah to a house. When he came, they asked him, Oh Abu Qasim. One of our men committed adultery with a woman. What is your judgment against him? So they placed the pillow and asked the Messenger of Allah to, to sit on it. Then the Messenger of Allah proceeded to say, Bring me the Torah. He didn't say alleged Torah, like you keep saying. Bring me the Torah. When they brought it, he removed the pillow from underneath him and placed the Torah on it and said, I believe in you. The copy of the Torah, not the original. The copy that the Jews gave him, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you, then said, bring me one of you who have the most knowledge. So they brought him a young man who told him the story of the stoning. The scholar said, if the Torah was corrupted, like you believe, if the Torah was corrupted, he would not have placed it on the pillow and he would not have said, I believe in you and in the one who revealed you. Finally, because this is the verse that you just read. This group of scholars also said, Allah said, and the word of your Lord has been accomplished truly and justly. There is none who can change his words. He is the hearing, the knowing, and the Torah is Allah's word. You see their logic? Let me explain their logic so in case you didn't get it. They read chapter 6, verse 115, which you read, which says none can change the words of Allah. And they said, the Torah is the word of Allah. Therefore, so the Torah cannot be changed. So the Torah remains. It's uncorrupt. It's pure. It's preserved. So my question to you okay, is so, this. Go ahead. Yeah. What is it? Okay. So the part where the Prophet Muhammad confirms that Torah and he puts it on the pillow, right? Mm -hmm. This, we don't believe he is all knowing. He doesn't know everything about the contents of everything. You he didn't know the careful, contents buddy. of the poison. Be careful. Because the Hadith say, nothing but inspiration comes from his mouth. He goes, whatever comes from my mouth, nothing but inspiration. So you're saying your prophet is a liar? You, no, no, you have to understand what that means. No, no, it's you, don't, you don't tell me what it means, dude. You're not a scholar. Please stop these games. I just read to you the scholars who interpreted it the way I'm interpreting it. Did you remember that part? The scholars okay. said... He would not have said this if the Torah is corrupt. You mean these scholars are idiots? They're waiting for you to correct them? Okay, so, all right, let me let me deal with this. So when the scholars say this, those scholars are not all-knowing either. But Just you're not all-knowing. Friend, you're not all-knowing. So why is okay, your listen. opinion better than theirs? And what makes you smarter than them when you're a young guy who don't know the sciences okay. of the Quran and you didn't even know who Ibn Qayyim was, let alone Ibn Taymiyyah, and you're now sitting judgment upon your own scholars? Okay. All right, stop Are you serious? Me. Let me just finish my point. No, you okay, can't finish so your point you, if you're going to lie, sir. No, you buddy, the story of the buddy, you can't finish your point if you're going to lie like this. The scholars who know Arabic inside and out, who know the sources. Let me, let me put my point out there. Let me put my point out Go there. Go ahead, put your point out there. I'm trying to help you to stop embarrassing okay, your so prophet. Can I, can I put a point out there? Can I put a point as out long there? as you don't embarrass your prophet, because that's my job to embarrass him, not you. You're supposed to love him. But go ahead. So, for example, when the Jewish lady fed the prophet food, and she claimed if he was a prophet, he wouldn't eat the poisoned food. Didn't she claim this? Oh, my goodness. You're now destroying Did she claim this? Hey guys, are you hearing it? He's destroying Muhammad. Good job. Keep, keep no, listen, talking. Listen. No, no, keep talking because you're recorded and other Muslims Here's are going to hear this. Question. Go ahead, yeah? Did she claim? Yeah, that's why we know he's not a prophet. He's a son of Satan. So did but she going? claim that he would not eat the poison food? Yes, that's why he's not a prophet. He's a no, son okay. of Satan. Answer but go question. ahead. Did she claim that? 
I just said it and three did, times. Okay, and did he, did he eat the poison food? Yes, because he's not a prophet. He's a son so of Satan. So now when scholars say the prophet... Now when scholars try and read the prophet's mind and say he wouldn't do this, they don't know. They don't know. This just like the Jewish lady didn't okay, know my if friend, he was going to eat it or not. You understand what you just did, right? It doesn't prove anything. Okay, no, you know you know what you just did, right? And I'm, I think I got to stop you from embarrassing the prophet. The Jewish lady said... If he ate the po poison, that would mean he's a false prophet. You just agreed with her. He ate the poison. You just condemn Muhammad as a son of Satan. No, no, wait, 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 wait. Hold on. No, 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 wait, 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 wait. Hold on. Hold on. Listen to what you said. Everyone heard it. It's recorded. Other Muslims are going to hear you. I hope they don't beat you to a bloody pulp for d disrespecting your prophet this way. The Jewish lady said, if you were a prophet, you would not eat the poison. And then you said, did he eat it? Meaning she's right. He's not a prophet, which is why he ate the poison. You understand what you just did? That, yes, that's what I'm saying. How does so she not know a the criteria of every situation if he eats it or not? No, doesn't she knew it? that it God. No, no, no. Let me explain to you your logic. No, no, no. She knew that the true God would have protected his prophet from being killed by poison. The fact that he wasn't protected means he's not a prophet. So she, you just proved her point. She, he's a false prophet, a son of Satan. You understand what you just did, right? So, so was she backed up by scripture when she said if he ate it? Or did she come up with that in her own head? Yes, because she knows that the true prophet of God would be protected from someone trying to poison him. And we find that in Mark 16 and Acts 28. So let's not go to my Bible. I want you to understand what you just did. See, you, you ended up embarrassing your prophet. I don't want to bring my Bible into it because, yes, she was right in what she said. She said, if you are a true prophet then you would not eat the poison but he ate the poison and then died from its effects meaning she's right he isn't a true prophet and you basically use that to show that muhammad doesn't know everything so you are saying god's hand was forced to listen to Dude, are, do you have trouble hearing and comprehending arguments was. do you and, do you have trouble hearing and comprehending arguments I didn't say God's hand is forced. I'm saying, no, that's, I know proof. What you're saying. I'm saying that's proof he's a false prophet because God let him eat the poison to damn him to hell, not to proof. die and that a curse of death. Proof. But now you change the subject. Let's come back to the issue here. The scholars who don't know the mind of Muhammad any better than you do. Yeah, I know. I'm only connecting that with the something. scholars who don't know the mind of Muhammad any better than you do, but trust him when he said, nothing but inspiration comes out of my mouth. Nothing but inspiration comes out of my mouth, like he says in the Hadith. They realize, I don't need to know his mind to know yeah. that his actions show that if he honored the Torah, the Torah must be the pure word of God. Otherwise, Jibreel or Allah would have told him, don't honor it, because why would Allah have Muhammad honor a corrupt Torah that no longer reflects the original Torah given to Moses. See, they were smarter than you and they reasoned better than you. Then they added 6115. Why are they wrong in 6115? Why are they wrong in 6115? They just interpret 6115 to say, none of Allah's words can be changed and the Torah is the word of Allah. This is why I brought up the Jewish lady. This is why I brought up the Jewish lady. All right, friends, okay. you're embarrassing your prophet. Let's go to another subject because right here, I don't want, honestly, for your sake, because this is recorded, I don't want okay, people to get upset. Okay. I don't want, no, I don't you want to. You didn't let me talk. You insulted me every time I tried speaking. No, because, I friend, I don't know if you understand. When someone lies and tap dance, I'm going to stop you. No, 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 don't use that excuse because if I was having this conversation with your prophet, he would have beheaded me. At least I don't kill you. I silence you to show you stop lying because you're not going to get far with your lies. Well, put that aside. Now, let's come back to another issue because you just embarrassed we Muhammad. Can, we can move on. We can move on I don't want you to embarrass Muhammad anymore. I don't want... Uh, let me embarrass Muhammad. You're supposed to defend Muhammad. Please, no. Muslim, don't really? embarrass your prophet really? like this. I'm the one who's supposed really? to do that. Okay, now, go to chapter 4 of the Quran for me. Chapter 4, Surah the nisa Okay. Chapter 4, Surah the nisa yeah, which verse? Okay, read 171 for me. Which verse? I just said 171. <laughs> Chapter 4, verse yeah. 171. All right. Wait, one second, one second, one second. All right, I'm giving you more than one second. One, one thousand, two, two thousand, three, three thousand, four, three.
All right, yeah, I got it. You got it? Yeah, okay. So, people of the scripture, do not commit excess in your religion or say about Allah except the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word, which he directed to Mary and a soul from him. Now, so correct, me, correct, do me a favor, correct that mistranslation of the Arabic. You read the Arabic, it doesn't say soul. What does it literally say? I'll correct the, the Sahih. English, I was reading the English translation. You want me to read the Arabic? No, but hold on. You're reading Sahih International, right? Uh, okay. I skipped the parentheses. No, yeah, but correct, it doesn't say soul. If you know Arabic, you know this word soul is nafs, yeah, and it doesn't say spirit, soul. I don't know. Let me read the Arabic. Yes, go ahead, please. If it's waruhun minhu. Okay, now translate that literally for me. A spirit from him. Okay, thank you. Read it one more time slowly because you have people listening who don't know Arabic. I want you to confirm that what you just read in Sahih International did not translate the Arabic correctly. It doesn't say nafs. It says ruh. So it says Jesus is karimatuhu alqaha illa maryam, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Al -qaha ila maryam. Okay, and then it says Waruchin minhu, right? Yeah. Translate that for me. Literally, translate here. Let me tell you which part I want you to translate literally for people to follow. Wa karimatuhu al qaha illa maryam waruchin minhu. Translate that literally. And his word delivered to Maryam. Delivered? What does al qaha mean? Al-Qaha means like delivered or casted. Or so you see, that's the part I see. Now I'm loving you because you're being honest. Cast. What? Cast, right? That's the same. This is a synonym. Okay. Friend, you understand delivered why. You, you can't, cast, friend, if, you, if you stop arguing and just, just translate cast, you'll see why it's not a synonym because words are defined in okay. context. Yeah. Cast, yeah, cast is good. Okay, I'm cast down to Miriam, right? Cast down to Miriam, a spirit from him, right? Cast towards Maryam. And a spirit from him, right? Yeah, a spirit okay. from him. Okay, here's my question, friend. Please answer the question. Please, please, my friend. I'm really trying to help you. And I don't want to, yes. I don't want to put you on the spot because you're a young guy. But man, when people tap dance and don't answer, it bothers me. So please, try to answer honestly. When it says his word, which he cast down from Mary and a spirit from him, please convince me that jesus wasn't already existing with allah before he came down to mary as a spirit because that's what the text just said how did you find that within the okay, text what does ruh and minhu mean does it mean spirit from who spirit from him who's him who's him allah Okay, so he's a spirit from Allah, and then you just said his word, which he cast down to Mary. If I cast something down, that means it has to be up, right? It right? doesn't necessarily have to be. It has to be from one point to yes, another. Yes, it has to be because it says cast down, which is why it says a spirit from him. So he came down. He was cast down from Allah as a spirit that entered Mary to become flesh. It's right there in front of you. It's right there, man. If I bring a blind man, he's going to see it. So what are, you, what are you trying to say here? I'm not saying anything about what your verse just said. Your verse just said, Jesus was there as a spirit with Allah as his word, and then he came down to Mary. So now, how in the world are you going to convince me that Jesus is just a man? He, he is just a man. Okay, so what, so wait, what was he when he was with Allah? And he's, when you, when, what was he when, when he was with Allah before it, he came to Mary? It says he is the word. Allah? It just said Kalimatuhu, his word, Allah's word. Sorry, your voice is cracking. Right? Yeah, Allah's word. He's Allah's, he's Allah's, okay. Allah's word. Okay, so what was he before he said, came down? What Sorry, was he, your voice what is cracking. What was he again. before he came down? The word of Allah. He's still the word of Allah. So what was he? It, it, it's right there. It's telling you, friend. It's right there. A spirit. What do I a spirit. So how can you convince yes. me? Convince me he's just a man when you just said he was there with Allah as his word as a spirit. So before he became man, he was already existing as a spirit with Allah because he was his word. So now convince me he's just a man. What you just read from your own Quran. 
that that's all he is. So, so okay, it seems that when it says water from men, you think that means that he was existing with Allah? I don't need to think that. From you Allah? Just, do we need to go through this again? I don't need to think that. The text says, Karimatuhu al -qaha. Do you understand why I said translate al -qaha? That came down, yeah. and he came down as a spirit from him. That's the text. It's right there. So, the angels gave the word to Maryam. That Show me where the angels gonna... gave the word to Maryam, meaning Jesus. That the word they gave to Maryam was Jesus. They announced to Mary, she's going to give yeah, birth to the word. That's not what so, the text says. It says Jesus is say, the word that came down. When we say he is a spirit from Allah or the word of Allah, we say the word of Allah because he's, the, he's Allah said, Kun for your Kun. Are you sure you want to go there? See, I want to make you think about it before you go there. You sure you want to use that argument? So I'm being nice. Okay, wait. Let me go. Let me go to the spirit part right now. Yeah. So when when he is specifically called the spirit from Allah, this is like how we understand the house of Allah, the camel of Allah. He is a special. Can spirit you stop from Allah. parroting the Salafi arguments because I want to demolish those arguments? I've heard your arguments. I I've heard your arguments. Some okay. arguments. Okay. No, it's not like Beit Allah. That's not like it's like Rahma. It's like <clears throat> Rahman, Rahim. It's like. Ruh Allah. So you're comparing two different categories as if they're the same. Yes, I've heard the argument. It's like the camel of Allah or the house of Allah. No, it's not like that. It's like the Rahmah of Allah. It's like the word of Allah. It's not like something created that belongs to Allah. It's one of the characteristics of Allah himself. Guy, I've heard your arguments. Please don't repeat arguments. I've already heard, been there, done that. So I'm going to ask you the question now. I'm going to ask you the question. Okay. You just said, you just said that the reason why Jesus is God's word because he was created by the command of Allah kun fayakun. You just said that, right? Yes. Okay. You sure you want to use that argument? Because I'm telling you, I've heard your arguments. I've heard your Muslim scholars. I wasn't born yesterday. I was born the day before. So I have an advantage. But anyway, you sure you want to use that argument? So I'm going to give you a minute to think about how bad of an argument that is. Yes, this is what the understanding of it is. Okay. Now, isn't it true that in chapter 3, verse 59 of the Quran, where Allah likens Jesus to Adam, that Allah said to Adam, Kun fayakun, be and he was. So he yeah. said that to Adam, right? Yeah. Okay, now so I'm going to challenge you. He's also. I'm going to challenge you. Just quote a single verse in your Quran or Hadith where Adam is called the word of Allah. There is none. Okay, but wait, your logic. Let me play your logic. You said Jesus mm -hmm. is the word of Allah because he was created by Allah's word. That means Adam should be called the word of Allah because he was created by Allah's word, but still he's not called the word of yeah. Allah. So because that's not the meaning. Yeah. That's not the meaning. Okay, so you want it to be specifically said with everyone that... No, I'm trying Allah, to use your argument. They don't change your argument. Your argument was... Yeah. Let me repeat your argument. See, again, you're not even listening to your own argument. Your okay, argument, was, argument can I, I repeat your argument no. so everyone got how you just set yourself up your argument was Jesus is God's word because Allah created him by his command kun fayakun. well hold on Adam was yes. created by Allah's command kun fayakun, and he's not called the word of Allah why not if your argument is right he is the word of Allah too it just where say it. It you can no say no 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 you cannot add to the Quran and the Sunnah of your Prophet. The only Prophet that your own Prophet called Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah, which is in the Ahadith, is Jesus. Your Prophet never said of anyone else, not even Adam, he's Kalimat Allah or Ruh Allah. He said, Isa ibn Maryam, Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah. So don't add to your Prophet. Okay. Don't add to his the words. Verse Okay, the verse that says he is just like in the Kamathal Isa Kamathal Adam. That is that verse. No, that actually says backfires they against you. They're, no, they're similar. That actually backfires against you. You know why? Because in making that argument, Muhammad again showed that he's not a true prophet. Because that's one of the worst arguments Muhammad could make. Because if that's true, Muhammad, that Jesus is like Adam, and that Adam was made from dust, kun fayakun then Adam should be the word of Allah and a spirit from him. But wait, Muhammad, you forgot. Adam is not said to be a spirit from him or Allah's word, which he cast down into the dust. 
So that argument shows Muhammad doesn't know what he's talking about. It's a bad argument because that backfires. You don't understand. I'm telling you, he is also the word of Allah. It just doesn't say. It says in that verse, he's just like. Do not the add that, to the words of your prophet. Do not add to the words of your prophet. Your prophet could have said that Adam is Kalimat Allah, Ruh and Min. But I guess he forgot because he was waiting for you to come in the 21st century to help him make that point. Please don't add to the words of your prophet. Unless you can quote your prophet saying, Adam is Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah, Ruh and Min. Don't add to the words of your prophet because your prophet could have said it. He could have simply said, Hey, Adam, Kalimat Allah. Did he forget okay, or did Allah forget to argument against you. Let me use this argument against Please, you. Please, I want you to. So, since the Quran is called the Furqan, it is the criteria and as is by the which we should judge. Torah. That means uh, the Torah should also be called this. The Injil should also be called this. The no, Sufi the Ibrahim Torah is called the Furqan. My friend, but I don't find it in the Quran. No, 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 no. It, this backfired against you. You didn't hear what I said. The revelation of Moses is called the Furqan. So your argument just imploded Both in your face. The Bur, Sufi Ibrahim, in No, Jail, it's called Furqan. Go, I'm going to embarrass you again. Go to chapter 40, verses 52. See, you're not listening. The more you open your mouth, the more I'm going to end up embarrassing you. The word you Furqan, you, let me, you want me to finish it? The, the word Furqan is used of the revelation of Moses. That's what's, what's, what you just said. Well, that means the Torah should be called. Go to 40. I agree with that. Go to, I go, agree with that. Right, so then you, you just show me the argument. For the Zabur, the Sufi, Are you going to talk Ibrahim, over it? No, 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 no. Hey, hey. <laughs> Calm down. Breathe. That backfired against you. You embarrass yourself. Reverse. You embarrass yourself. Let me explain why. Because you said, well, the Quran's called for Khan, So the Torah should be in the God. Ah, oh, but the Torah is. Oh, okay. I agree the Torah, but now show me the gospel. The fact that yeah, something. That's can that's I finish that's the that's point? Argument. Can I finish the point before you embarrass yourself yeah. further? The fact that something other than the Quran is called for Khan proved my point. That means Adam could have also been called the word of Allah. He isn't. So booyah, it busted in your face. No, it did okay. not. You did Let's not repeat this again. Is, is something other than words. the Quran? Is something other than the Quran called Furqan? Yes or no? Yes. Is the Torah also called the Furqan? Yes or no? Yes. Okay. So then you just made my point. Allah could have also called Adam the word of Allah besides Jesus. He didn't. So it just busted and imploded in your face. You don't see that? No, I okay. understand what you're trying to say. You're trying to say that because there's someone else called the Purifa, something else called the That Purifa, was your argument, man. Dude, you know word. that's your argument? That's your Ever? argument. No, that's your argument. You just said everyone heard you. Oh, my goodness. No, no, I understand your argument. You're trying no, to say you're that the one who made the argument. Second word of Allah no, you. Ma the oh man, listen, dude. You made the argument. Let me repeat what you said. You brought up Furqan. I didn't bring up Furqan. You said, "Hey, the Quran is called Furqan." Well, does that mean the Torah and the Gospel of are not called Furqan because it's never used of that? I said, "No, it is. It's used of the Torah." So the very argument yeah. you use backfired against you and proved my point. Just like, oh, okay. can I finish the point? Just like. Okay. The Torah is also called Furqan, not just the Quran. Likewise, Allah could have called Adam the word of Allah like he did Jesus. So the argument you use proved my point and imploded in your face. Aren't you getting it? Oh, it, did. it didn't. You want me to tell you why? This is silly, man. Okay, because yeah, it is you silly. Your arguments are silly. Scripture. I told you all of the scriptures are called the same exact thing, but they're not all called. No, them. you can't. But no, don't add to that. that. No, 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 no. You're not Muhammad. You can't tell me what the scriptures are called unless Muhammad tells you. Stop adding to the words of your prophet. All you can tell me is Torah is Furqan, Quran is Furqan, and that's all. Don't go beyond what your prophet said. So now, don't go beyond what your prophet said. Show me that Adam is the word of Allah and a spirit from him. In the Kamathal Isa, Kamathal Adam. That is Show me where in that verse simple. says, because it's Adam is Kun Fayakun. That he too is the word of Allah. The very verse you're using actually proves my point again. Show that to me. It doesn't explicitly say he's the word of Allah. Say it again. I don't say it again. Wait, wait. Say it out loud. So it, doesn't, it doesn't explicitly say he's the word of Allah. Okay. That's what you're asking. Even though in that same chapter that you read, Jesus is explicitly said to be the word of Allah. Because in chapter 3, verse 45, in the very chapter where Jesus is likened to Adam, in that same chapter, Jesus is again called the word of Allah in chapter 3, verse 45. But in that chapter, Adam is still not called 
the word of Allah. Wow. Go to chapter 3, read verse 45. Chapter 3, verse 45. All right, yeah, I got it. Read it for me, please. And mention when the angel said, O Mary, indeed Allah gives you good tidings of a word from him, whose name will be the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, distinguished in this world and the hereafter and among those brought near to Allah. Okay. Now, when it says, Kalimat, Kalimatin, Minhu. Minhu. Okay. Now, you know about Arabic grammar. I think you do because you're reading the Arabic and I'll give you the benefit of benefit that. We know that kalimat is feminine and feminine noun, right? That doesn't mean it's a woman. It just means that it's feminine noun, right? Yes. Okay. Now, the, the word for whose name, <clears throat> what is it in Arabic? Whose name is? What is that in Arabic? Say it so everyone can hear you. <laughs> no, the word where it says, a word from him, whose name? In Arabic, that phrase, whose name is what? Ismuhu. Ismuhu. Okay, Ismuhu, right? Yeah. Okay. Is that feminine or masculine? This is feminine. No, read it again. Ismuhu is not feminine. It's masculine. Oh, sure. I mean, I don't really even oh, know yeah. about the whole feminine, masculine. Okay, thing now here's the point. Karimat is feminine. It's a feminine noun. But the word... Ismuhu is masculine. Why would the <clears throat> grammar of the Arabic change where you have a feminine noun, but the word here is masculine? Because the rules of Arabic grammar means that if it's a feminine noun, then that phrase should have been feminine, but instead it's masculine. And I'll explain to you why. Because this word is becoming an actual person. The word is a male named Jesus. He is the word. The word is him. That's why it goes from a feminine noun to using the masculine form of his name, showing that the word is an actual person and not simply simply created by God's command. You aware of this? Okay. I don't. I'm not familiar with this topic of feminine, masculine, okay. Arabic. I'm not really familiar. So I'm okay, not that's speak fine. On this. Put it aside. Okay, but let's let's keep it on that point, though, so we don't lose you here. Since in this very chapter, again, Jesus is said to be the word from Allah. In the very chapter where he's likened to Adam. Why is it Allah goes out of his way to say Jesus is the word, but still falls short of saying Adam is the word? Why can't he make it explicit? Because th this is Allah's truth. We don't know why. This you should know why. Way you should know why, because the Quran says that because it is a book that explains everything in detail. How come Allah forgot to explain this in detail? This, I mean, when you look at certain prophets, they have certain nicknames given to them specifically for yeah. them that could be applied to my others. My brother in humanity, so this is my brother in humanity, you're making my point. Every prophet may have a unique title and characteristic because he had a unique function. You know, you're making my point. Jesus has unique titles because he's unique and different from these other prophets in this respect. But you're arguing the opposite. You're saying Adam is also the word of Allah. And therefore can be called that but you just made the argument each prophet has a unique title yes so now you're making my case jesus is uniquely called the word of allah no one else not even adam so what point are you trying to make okay so if you look at the whole quran in general there's verses that clearly dispute what you're trying to get at that say he's just a man he's yeah, a normal you, you understand was just a okay my friend you understand listen to what i'm saying okay. you understand that I don't believe the Quran is perfect and that it's full of contradictions. And I'm showing you the problems with your Quran mm -hmm. so that you can see. So, yes, I know the Quran is going to say Jesus is but a servant. But then I'm telling you, how can he but be but a servant when he comes down from Allah as his word and as a spirit? Aren't you getting the point that no, your book this is full is of your, contradictions? This is what you're adding on to it. You, none of this is said. I, I, I added on to 4171. I added it. 417 is not in your Quran? That does not say all the stuff you're saying, man. Wait, wait, hold on. So if I say to you, hold on. Okay. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's go. I say to you, the Quran, Kalimatuhu al illa Muhammad. The Quran is Allah's word cast down to Muhammad. Would you deny the Quran came from Allah from above the seven heavens? It did. Say it again? It did. It did. But that's my point. 
If I were to use that phrase for the Quran, Quran, kalimatuhu alqaha illa Muhammad. His word cast down to Muhammad. You say, yes, the Quran came from Allah above the seven heavens. But when that language is used for Jesus, no, it can't mean that. Why the inconsistency? Because you are, you're basically trying to get at it. It's like coming from the clouds. It's coming down to the earth. And like, this is not, Where when it says come from? He lasts someone, it doesn't mean like it's physically on its way. It just means it's, it's here. It's revealed. So you That's mean the Quran, means. the Quran wasn't you. above the clouds somehow? It was just revealed, so the Quran didn't come from Allah from above the seven. It's not a speech. It's not in the mother of the no, book. It did. It what? It did, but it's oh, okay. it necessitate that it has to come from the sky and fall down. The Quran. So where did the Quran come from? Then? The earth. Where, did it come, mean, where did it come from? If it didn't come from Allah above the seven heavens, it was. Given, it was um, given to the angel, Jibreel. And where is Jibreel? Is Jibreel above the clouds? Is he above the clouds, Jibreel? Is he in heaven somewhere? Yeah, but oh. he comes to earth. Uh -huh. So, <laughs> so you were back to square one. The Quran does come from above the seven heavens because you have an angel who's within the seven heavens who takes the Quran and brings it down to the earth. So we're back to square one. So where you did Jesus come from? Be destroyed. You know how this argument can be destroyed easily? Please destroy it. There, were some, your verses that were, there were some verses where the prophet had a vision or he heard a bell sound and the angel didn't come. So okay, you but you, you said Gabriel. Fran, do you understand you're refuting yourself? You mentioned Gabriel. I didn't mention Gabriel. Why'd you mention no, Gabriel? You're saying it has to come from the heavens to the no, earth. No, you the said the Quran is from above. Okay, Quran. let's try this again. Let's try. Maybe, maybe my English is not too clear. I'll give you the benefit of that. Is the Quran actually with Allah Hello? on a tablet? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Now you can't hear me. Yeah, okay. I can hear you now. Okay. Is the Quran actually with Allah on a tablet? Yeah, yeah, I haven't read too much about those hadiths. I've heard of this, but okay. So then, I if you read. okay, friend, again, then why are you arguing about points you're not certain of? Because the Islamic view is the Quran is there with Allah on a tablet called Ummul Kitab, the mother of the book, and it came down above the seven heavens to the lowest heaven in the month of Ramadan, and from there, Jibril alayhi salam revealed it piecemeal to your prophet over 23 years. I don't want to be teaching your religion. But now let's put that aside. Yeah. Okay, let's put that aside. Forget about it. Since we now agree the Quran is the word of Allah, that's there with Allah above the seven heavens. Since Jesus is the word of Allah, that's said to have come down as a spirit. Prove to me he wasn't there before he entered the womb of Mary. Dude, this I, I just went through this argument with you. Okay, we're getting nowhere. But now let me further prove to you Jesus is from Allah, according to your Quran, not from the earth. Is it not true that those who die, if they're from the earth, like Adam from the dust, they go back to the dust, right? Like when your prophet died, they buried him, right? Yeah. Okay. So can you explain to me if Jesus is from the earth, why is it when it was time for him to leave the earth, he didn't go to the dust, he went to Allah from where he came. If he didn't come from Allah, why did he go back to Allah? Because he didn't die. That didn't answer the question. No, he didn't die. Allah okay, saved even him. That doesn't answer the question. Up. That's a debate whether he didn't die or not. What I'm saying is, why didn't he die? And why did he go back to Allah? Why didn't Allah simply have him die and have him return to the dust if he's from the earth? So this is, he doesn't, Allah doesn't have to do this. Allah can do whatever he wants. He can bring him up. That's, a, that's a nice cop out answer. I mean, that's a nice cop out answer. I mean, that's how we tap dance around issues that we can't answer, but you're not listening. According to your own Quran, the Quran is a book that explains everything in detail. It leaves nothing for guesswork because Allah will explain everything that is mentioned in the Quran in detail. I'll give you the verses to show that. So then if, if Allah <clears throat> wanted me to know that Jesus is not from him, and that's why he returned to him, then why didn't Allah cause Jesus to die and return him to the dust? Allah gives the answer. Where? In surah. Allah raised him up to himself. Why? That's to my save question. Him. Why? To save him from the crucifixion. Okay, so but why did God Allah save Jesus from the crucifixion when you just read an ayah that said 
the Bani Israel killed many prophets. So why save this prophet from killing him and take him to heaven when other prophets he allowed them to be killed by Bani Israel? Because, because when the Dajjal comes, he's going to come and kill the anti. The what does that got to do with? What does complete. that got to do with? Allah allowing prophets to be killed and yet for some reason he doesn't allow Jesus to be killed because he could allow Jesus to be killed and raise him and send them back alive because even in your Quran don't you have resurrection of dead people people who died and were raised yes so why didn't Allah simply have Jesus killed like all the other prophets then raise him to life and send them back at the end to kill the Dajjal even though that's not in the Quran so you're not answering questions you're creating more problems because now you introduce so another you problem are you claiming that Allah is he, he doesn't there's no way he can let him just live? No, Are you I, trying to say that that's not what don't change he has argument. to do it one no, no, way. No, don't change argument. My argument is if Jesus comes from Allah, then it makes sense he went back to Allah. And what do we find? He went back to Allah because 4171 says that's where he came from. He didn't come from the earth like your prophet or Adam. He came from Allah as a spirit and went back to where he came from. You understand my point now? Look, I understand what you're trying to get at. I think you understand what I'm trying to say now. I don't but know what you're trying to say to me. You're, you're all over the place. No, no, no. No, I'm telling you, Allah could have done that if Allah wanted to, but he didn't. Are we Are we to question? No, we, we are to meditate and venture into what the Quran says and why it says it to understand the point of the Quran, unless you believe the Quran is a book of mishmash, incoherent babble. Is the Quran okay, meant to but, be understood okay, or is the Quran a book of misguidance and confusion? Okay, but do you do you understand what I'm getting at when I say that Allah I can perfectly do it the way understand he wants what you're saying, and I'm turning it back against you saying, friend, if the Quran mentions something, that means it's for you to understand what it's saying, why it's saying it, because the Quran says it's a book that explains everything in detail. It explains all things fully and completely. This is the repeated assertion of the Quran. That means if I believe your Quran, I have to believe that when Jesus comes from Allah as a spirit and returns to Allah, that that's going to be a point that I'm supposed to understand and derive some teaching from because the Quran is supposedly a book of guidance, not misguidance, that provides absolute, fully detailed exposition of everything it mentions. Okay, but this is the argument you used has no relevance to that point. It has a lot to do because it shows me Jesus is no I mere never, man, that he's the eternal word who became flesh and reigned with the Gospel of John. No. Tell me, okay, no. of the you Gospels, know, okay, hold on, okay. Even, of the Gospels in the New Testament, which Gospel says Jesus is the word of God that became flesh? Is that Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? Which of the gospels? Uh, this is a John. And so why is the Quran agreeing with John and saying Jesus is the word of Allah that came down as a spirit to Mary if God, John's gospel is wrong? Does it say came down? You just read it. al illa Maryam for the love of God. We just, uh, you just admit it, it means cast down. No. Did you you did. understand what I was saying when that it doesn't have to come from the heavens above to the earth? It doesn't always mean that. Okay, friend, I told you it has to mean that because then it says a spirit from him. What else does the Quran need to say to you that he did come down from Allah, which is why it says a spirit, because when he was with Allah, he wasn't physical. He was a spirit that came down from Allah to become physical by entering Mary. I mean, man, it's right there. 4171, oh my goodness. It's right in front of your eyes, oh. man. Oh my goodness. The camel, when it says the camel. Can you Allah, show me where it says the camel? Pet, okay, let's let's it play that game. This. It means let's play your camel. game. Allah created. Yeah, okay, let's play your game. Show me where it says the camel, al qaha il al ard. The camel was sent down to the earth. Ruch and Min. Show no. me where the Quran says that about the camel. It just doesn't say that. It doesn't say that. Wait, wait, say it again. I want people to hear you. Even though that. camel of Allah, what you want? Well, let, I'm trying to let them understand. It does not say this. Camel of Allah, because you're saying camel of Allah means it belongs to Allah because He created it to show that's what it means about Jesus. Okay, can you show me where the Quran says the camel al-qaha al-ard? The camel was sent down to the earth 
Ruh al as a spirit from Allah. Can you, it doesn't say that about the camel, right? It doesn't say no, that about, it does not say this. Does it say that about the house of Allah? Does it say, Bait Allah al qaha al al ard? It was sent down to the earth. No, 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 it does not say this. But it does say that about Jesus, but still, you're no. going to liken Jesus to the camel and to the house. Okay. I think I think you understand what I'm saying, but you have an agenda, and you're, you're trying to really push it. You're not really you're, you no, understand my what agenda I'm saying. To show you, to... My agenda is to show you your Quran is incoherent. Muhammad is not a prophet, so you turn away from him and come to your only hope of hey. salvation, Jesus Christ, your Lord. Can I ask you a yes? Or, yes, tell me yes or no questions. Can it depends you if you're asking questions? sincerely. Well, yes, if you're not asking sincerely, yeah, I it's answer. not the subject. It's not the subject. I'm trying to see. If you can follow along with what I'm trying to say. I've been following. Okay, so friends. first question. First question. The Quran is sent from Allah to the Prophet Muhammad. Yes or no? That's what you and believe. According right? to us. According according to yeah, according Muslims. to you, yes. That's what you believe, yes. Yes, say yes or no. Yes I just said no. yes. According to your belief, yes. That's what you believe. The Quran. Yes, yes, yes. I'm asking you another question now. Go ahead. The Quran is always physically brought from heaven to earth yes or not i don't know what you mean physically define physical like mm -hmm. like like the revelation is actually brought from the, the heavens to the earth like, like the angel coming in between always so, always because say when yes you say no. physical because i know the quran is in a tablet that tablet didn't come down are you saying that what is in the tablet was recited no, no. recited to let's say jibreel like, and he brought down the recitation yeah, and brought down to earth. Was yeah. it always like that? Was it always brought down with the angel Jibril in the middle? Was it always? No, no, who yes said no? always? No, not at all. The Quran says at times it was the Holy Spirit that brought it to the prophet. prophet. No, no, answer the question. I was did. the Quran always brought from the heavens to earth with the angel Jibril in the middle? I, did you hear my yes answer? No? Are you pretending that you're not listening? Did you hear what you I just said? said? No, I didn't. Uh, uh, your voice is cracking. Your voice is cracking right now. Okay, I'm sorry. well, just snap, say it again. Snap, crackle, and pop. Uh, the Quran says it wasn't always Gabriel. Sometimes it was the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't always brought from the heavens to the earth. I didn't say yes no, or no. No, no, no. That's not what you asked me. So you changed the question. You said, was it always brought down by Gabriel from heaven to earth? No, not always Gabriel, but it did come down from heaven, but not always through Gabriel. So when the prophet had a vision and he'd hear a sound of a bell in his head mm -hmm. and then he'd get the revelation that way, was that being brought from the heavens to the yes. earth? Yes, it was brought to from the heaven into his mind, projected into his mind from heaven. Where do you think the vision came from? What? So, so by that logic, the word doesn't always come down from heavens to the yes, earth in the way you were first saying. Yes. It can come in a different way just as that revelation came in I, a vision. Are you hearing my answer or you're pretending to hear my answer? No, I heard your answer. You said. Let me repeat it again. Said, um, Even when it comes to a, and to Muhammad in a vision, it's still coming from Allah, from above the heavens, down to Muhammad in a vision. It's still coming down. But unless you think that Jesus came down to Mary in a vision, how is that parallel to Mary? Did oh, Jesus actually come down? It doesn't have to do with the vision. It doesn't have to do with the vision. So did Jesus it come down? Do was he a spirit that came down, or yes or no? Because even your argument with the Quran, you're proving my point. Just like the Quran did come down, it came down either through the agency of the Holy Spirit or Gabriel, or it came down and entered Muhammad's mind as a vision or a dream. It still came down. So did Jesus actually come down as a spirit? It doesn't mean it physically comes be down. Be careful what you say. It just means Allah lets him have a vision. Right. Have be careful what you earth. say. Be careful what you say because you know there are Muslims who are going to hear you. They're going to be upset with you. See, we Christians, we don't kill people for speaking stupidly or blasphemously. We leave that to God. Be careful what you say about the Quran because you already said some stuff that if a Muslim hears you, he's going to be upset with you when you said that Muhammad didn't know what he's talking about all the time when it came to the Torah. When you have Muslims who quote the Hadith that says, nothing but inspiration comes from his mouth. Think twice before you say something. And I'm saying this for your own safety because you have Muslims who are going to flip on you and are going to harm you. We don't do that. Jesus doesn't tell us to kill people who insult him or the apostles. That's your religion. Be careful okay. how you express your faith. I'm saying this out of concern for you. 
Do you understand what I was trying to say yeah. with the vision? And I'm, with the vision and I'm telling similarity? you, and I'm telling you, either you don't understand what your tradition says about the descent of the Quran, or you do, but you're trying to tap dance because you're stuck with Jesus coming down from Allah, which is why he went back to Allah. So did Jesus actually go back to Allah? Did he actually go to Allah? Is he actually with Allah? Yeah. Yes? Yes. Are you sure? Like, what do you mean? Like He went to Allah took him. Now, right now, Jesus was taken out of the earth and he was taken to Allah. Yeah, he was brought to Allah. Okay, so, so the going to Allah is actual. It actually happened. But the coming down from Allah, that's not actual. You see your inconsistency. He didn't, he didn't fall from the heavens to the earth. Okay, which part of the down. word was sent down to Mary and a spirit from him wasn't clear? The word that came down or the spirit from him? Which part of that sentence wasn't clear to you? Okay, look, let's agree to disagree. I okay. just brought like... All right, let's put that minutes. aside. All right, but now let's go, back to, let's go back to what you just admitted. You just admitted. You just admitted. Jesus was taken out of the earth and he's with Allah, right? Out of the earth, you mean like from the grave? No, not from the grave. No, uh, dude, why? If I if I leave the earth and I go to the, to the, moon, earth, the moon, to the to the to the heavens. Okay, so Jesus was taken physically out of this earth, right? Yes. Okay. Now, can you show me where it says into the heavens? Because you just added to the Quran. The Quran says that Allah took him to Himself in chapter three, verse fifty-five. Yeah, I mean. That, that's what I'm trying to get at. Like, okay, so, took him to himself. Okay, so you agree, because everyone, I want everyone to hear that you're agreeing, and I respect that, that Allah took Jesus physically out of the earth to himself, right? Yes. yes. Okay, where is Allah, according to your belief? Where is he? Allah is above the throne. So you, thank you. Guys, did you hear what he just said? He said Allah is above the throne, and he said that's where Allah took Jesus. So you just admit Allah took Jesus to be with Allah above the throne. Thank you. No, that is not. What you just said, exactly, Allah took Jesus to Himself, man. Not exactly right next to Allah. That's is that what okay, where does it say not exactly next to Allah? Where does the text qualify? It says Allah to Himself. When when you go to to when Himself, the where to paradise, Allah brings them to Himself, which is in Jannah. But in Allah's the, not in Jannah. In Allah's, mean necessarily Allah's not away. in Jannah. What's that? Allah's not in Jannah. You just said he's above the throne. Is the yeah. throne in Jannah or is it above Jannah? When when Allah says took him to himself. Why are you why are you interpreting Allah? Why are you helping Allah improve on his language? Could Allah have not said, I took Jesus to Jannah? Why did he say to himself? Mutawafika ilay is the word in Arabic. Okay, I know what right, dude, I know what mutawafika from tawaffa can mean cause you to die. Yeah. It can mean cause you to die. Let's forget about the tawaffa part. I'm talking about the rafa'a part where he took him. Could Allah have saying, could Allah have said, Oh Isa, I'm going to take you to Jannah. He could have said that, right? He could have said it. If he so, but to. what did Allah actually say? Not what you think he said. What did Allah actually say? I will read it. Well, the translation, it says, Mutawafika wa rafiuka ilayhi means will take okay. will you, take yes. you and raise you up to me. Okay, up to me, right? Up to ilayya, me, right? Okay. Ilayya means like to me, to yeah, me. Yeah, to me. I know, to me, whatever. Up to me, side to okay, we get the point. To me. So plain English. Oh Isa, I'm gonna cause you to die, and then I'm gonna raise you to myself. Means oh Isa, I'm gonna cause you to die, I'm gonna raise you to Jannah. Yeah. yeah. You serious? So Allah could not simply say, I will cause you to die and raise you to Jannah, but he confused the whole world by saying, I'll cause you to die and raise you to myself. And myself doesn't mean Jannah. It means wherever Allah is, that's where you're going to be. No, no, no. We don't know exactly like where he is. But you exactly just said he's above he the throne. Allah says raise him to himself. But where is Allah? It doesn't mean he has to be. Where is Allah? That... Where is he, dude? You're killing me, dude. Where is Allah? Where is he? Is Allah, Allah above, above the throne? throne? So if I say, hey, I'm going to send you a ticket to take you to where I'm at so you can be with me. But I rallied. I don't mean with me. You're going to be in the basement in my friend's apartment while I live in a mansion somewhere. So if I say, hey, hey, guy, I'm going to send you a plane ticket. So where I'm at, you'll be with me to bring you to me. 
And then I put you in the basement in my buddy's uh, complex, and I'm living somewhere in a mansion. Mansion, say, hey, I thought you're bringing me to you. Why am I in the basement? Yeah, but who told you bringing you to me means where I'm at? I'm at the basement. Are you serious? This is cool, man. This is a very silly argument you're presenting. Right? Exactly, your response is silly. <laughs> this, 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 exactly. No, you think what? <laughs> When Allah, okay, when Allah says, raise you to me, you're telling me it can't mean he's in a he one of the heavens right now. You, you're telling me it can't mean no, that. No, because if be Allah's not right in one of the heavens, heavens you're me. if Allah's not in one of the heavens, then Jesus is where Allah is. So if Allah's in one of the heavens, then Jesus is in one of the heavens. Is Allah in one of the heavens? No, 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 Allah's not. Allah's above the throne. But okay, so Allah where is Jesus then? To Allah. Going that direction up, it isn't. We don't know which heaven Friend, number don't, it is. Don't or blame me. Is don't blame me for what your prophet said. I'm just quoting what your prophet said. Your prophet said Allah took Jesus to you himself. You don't have the issue with this. You have the issue with this. It's a you problem, man. I don't know. And I, and Allah, since that one, let's put that aside. You just said that Jesus is coming back to kill yeah. the Antichrist, right? Yes. Okay. How many years has Jesus been physically alive? Because you said he didn't die, right? Yeah. Okay, how many years has he been alive? We don't know. One day here is like 50,000 no, Well, that's in, Allah. Unless you believe Jesus is Allah. Unless you believe Jesus is Allah, you can't use that for Jesus. You believe Jesus is Allah because, yeah, to Allah, no. one day is like a thousand years. So Jesus is like God and that time means nothing to him? No. Okay, Are how many years has Jesus been alive? When you're, in the, when you're in the grave, for example, one day for the last human being is going to be equal to one day for oh, very thousands of years ago. It's going to be the sight? same amount of time. Okay, one day time and who's sight? Allah sight? Allah sight? Time. So, Friend, man, listen, let's, let's keep this simple. I know a day before Allah is like a thousand years, thousand years is like a day or 50,000. Okay, we're not talking about Allah because whether <clears throat> that... A day is like a thousand or fifty thousand years before Allah. That has nothing to do with the creature. As a creature, I'm still bound to time. I'm still <clears throat> bound to time and space. Jesus, unless he's Allah, you don't believe he's Allah, you believe he's a creature. That means he's been where he's at for a period of years. Because he's still a creature. Creatures are still bound to time. Unless you believe he's God, then why are you a Muslim? So how many years has no. this Jesus been alive physically in wherever he is? So if you're talking about how many years, technically it's 2000, but Allah has right? time for certain yeah. individuals. Put, so you're listen, telling Allah is not capable of this. I know, who said, dude, I agree with you. Jesus is alive and he's been alive. So what do you mean? I don't, I'm not, that's not my argument. You're not getting my point. So you just admit over 2,000 years, Jesus has been alive. No, I understand what you're trying to say. So he's alive physically for about 2,000 years, you're right? You're trying to say that for 2,000 years, he... You don't even know what I'm no, about to say. You're trying to say like he's counting the seconds, 2,000 years. I'm uh, saying that Allah can distort... No, time. don't add, add, to my, don't like add words to my mouth. You confirm he's been alive for over 2,000 years. Physically, he's alive. All right. So Jesus, for some reason, is born of a virgin... And for some reason, he's been alive for, for 2,000 plus years physically in whatever dimension because you don't think he's with Allah. <clears throat> and for some reason, Jesus is going to come back physically to kill the Antichrist. And for some reason, Jesus' mother is the only woman mentioned by name in the Quran. And for some reason, <clears throat> Jesus' mother is the only woman that has a chapter named in her honor. And for some reason, in chapter 3, verse 42, Jesus' mother is said to be the greatest woman that Allah created. And yet Muhammad's parents are not mentioned by name. Muhammad's parents died as mushrikun, <clears throat> polytheists. The hadith in Muslims say that when Muhammad went to the grave of his mother Amina, he asked Allah to forgive her and Allah said no. And he wept bitterly because Allah would not forgive his mother. And yet you still want to get us to believe that Jesus is just a man. And he's given these honors that not even your prophet was given. And your prophet was dishonored by his own God in that his mother died as a pagan. And when Muhammad asked that Allah forgive her, he said no. And you still want to convince us to follow Muhammad and ignore Jesus and think that Jesus is just a man. Yeah, that makes sense. So your argument is that because 
Prophet Jesus' mother is named in Prophet Muhammad. Be careful, yes, be careful how you argue. Name. No, hold on, be careful how you argue because it's going to backfire. So I'm warning you, it's not only Jesus' mother. Can you mention any other woman that the Quran mentions by name in your Quran? The Quran, I said, yeah, the Quran mentions by name. That's redundant to say the Quran mentions by name in the Quran. No. Is there no. any other woman mentioned by name in, in the, the entire Quran? No, no. Say it again. I don't, I haven't, I don't know. I there mean, isn't. I, I don't remember. I there think, isn't. No, I think, no. There isn't. Okay. Okay. When it talks about a woman will say the wife of Ibrahim or the daughter of such and such. So, and yet yes, yes. Mary, Mary is the only woman mentioned by name. And not only mentioned by name, in chapter 3 verse 42, she said to be the, the greatest Chosen. woman that Allah created. Chapter 3 verse 42. Okay. Why? Yeah, of all the women in mankind. Why? You just admitted to, so I'm glad you did. Why? Because she was the, because uh, her mother made dua for her before she was born that Allah would, that she would use her as a dedicated to the religion. So you mean the, 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 the wives of the prophets didn't make dua for their children? Look, <laughs> the, 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 this doesn't, it's Allah's choice who why, he chooses as why, the yeah, well, hold on. Why is Mary not only the greatest woman Allah created, the only woman mentioned by name, and why is it that Jesus is born of a virgin? Please don't tell me Adam and Eve. That's going to backfire against you. But go ahead, use that argument. Why is Jesus born of a virgin? Because this is the way Allah decided of making him born. Allah Gee, has the what a coincidence. Of all the persons, Jesus is the one born of a virgin. Of all the persons, Jesus' mother is the only one mentioned by name. Of all the persons, yes. Jesus' mother is the greatest woman. And it's just because Allah decided to do that for just this one person and nobody else. Yeah, that's it. There's nothing special. Yeah. Are you serious? Okay, well, let me use this argument against you then. Please do. Uh, prophet, prophet Moses, the, uh, the only prophet in the Quran mentioned by name that Allah talked to. That's, that's uh, a lie. What else? That's a lie. That's he, not what the Quran says. You're lying again. No, I know there's a... By name, by no, name. No, 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 no. You told. just read it. Chapter 3, verse 55. Was Allah talking to Mickey Mouse or Jesus? You just read it. Who was Allah talking to in chapter 3, verse 55? Mickey Mouse? Okay, okay you want me to use a different argument then? No, no, wait, wait. Is, is stick with one... that first argument. Wait, wait. Stick with the first argument. Buddy, you just said... The, the okay, can I finish oh, yeah, your okay. point? Can I finish your point? You just said... Moses is the only one that Allah spoke to directly. No, that's a lie. In chapter 3, no, verse no, 55, no, can I finish? Allah Allahu Akbar, Allah. Allahu Akbar! Let me finish the point so people hear what you said, dude. Don't go in panic mode. Because now you backtrack. You yeah, said... I know what you're trying to say. I know what you're trying to say. Let me finish the point for the people who are listening. You said that Moses is the only one that Allah spoke directly to. That's a lie. Because in chapter 3, verse 55... It says Allah spoke directly to Jesus. So that example is not going to work. Throw that out the window. No, you don't know if the angel is bringing this news. Here to again, in we Allah's have Allah failing to communicate because Allah, even though he said the Quran is his word, and even though the Quran is supposed to be fully detailed, it forgot to add the detail. It wasn't Allah who said to Jesus, Oh, Isa, I'm going to cause you to die and raise you to myself. It was actually the, the angel who said that. You see, you keep accusing Allah of being the worst communicator known to mankind. The verse okay. is plain. Allah spoke to Jesus. We don't know if it was an angel in between. Yes, we do. Because the other instances where yes, we do. <laughs> yes, we do. We do because the Quran is a book that supposedly provides complete details explains everything if the quran wanted me to okay, know okay. that it's gabriel speaking to jesus it would have said jibreel came to isa and said ya isa allah says x y and z but in 355 it says allah said to jesus you don't get any plainer than that because would you deny in 5116 that allah and jesus are actually talking to each other when it says allah will say to jesus oh isa did you tell mankind to take you and your mother as two gods besides Allah? Is Allah speaking to Jesus or is that the angel again? This is the day of judgment, I believe. Okay, is so is Allah speaking to Jesus or is it the angel again? 
We don't know. This is probably oh, goodness, a look day of judgment. Everyone. All right. Uh, okay. Says so let's get back to the point. Um, we're tying people. Okay, up. Can I can I say one? Can I say one point? Go ahead. Can I say one point? Go ahead. So when when using your earlier argument, so okay, Prophet Yusuf is the only one that sajda was done to an, another human being on the earth. Okay, now, can use this you sure you want to use say, that argument? Isn't he special? You sure? Very unique. You sure you want to use that argument, Sajda? Because everyone just heard you use the word Sajda. You oh. sure? You want to so use that yeah, argument? Prostration was done by his body. Okay, so prostration, right? And I know what you're referring to. Surat al Yunus, Ayah 4 yes. and Ayah 100. Yes. Chapter 12, verse 4, chapter 12, verse 100. I know what you're referring to. You pause it if you want to go there. You want to use that argument. I mean, that was just the point, but I know what you're gonna. Your argument is this shit. I already heard your argument. Oh, before, okay. Even though so that then, it's, but wait, it's not but uh, but Eunice is not the only one that had such the, that had such that being offered to him. Adam had all the angels well, offered such to him, right? But Prophet Adam too, which okay. which so, debunks your whole shirt. Argument. No, actually, no, no. It actually it shows that you have no clue how to refute these contradictions in the Quran. But let's put that aside. Yes. Yunus received sajda. All right. So did Adam. Yusuf. 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 Yes, Yusuf. I'm sorry, because you know the Arabic word Surat al Yunus is chapter ten. Surat al Yusuf is chapter twelve. Sorry, forgive yeah. me, my friend. I have a hard time speaking English, let alone Arabic. All right. Now let's get back to the point. You're going to compare a person receiving prostration to Jesus, whose mother is said to be the greatest woman that Allah created. The only woman mentioned by name who was born to her while he while she was a virgin no man touched her who did things that only allah does in the quran such as create birds from clay and breathe life into them to a man receiving prostration from his family members so you can single out one unique feature of joseph but all these other unique characteristics that are attributed to jesus alone that he alone is called the word of allah a spirit from him his mother was a blessed virgin that conceived him and gave birth to him. His mother is the greatest of all women, the only woman mentioned by name. Jesus creates clay, <clears throat> fashions a bird from clay, breathes into it, and makes it a living bird the same way Allah did for Adam. Let's ignore all these plethora of characteristics and focus yeah. on one aspect, that these people prostrated to Yusuf and it makes him equivalent to Isa. Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar! Allah Akbar. Oh, no, no. I can bring you another if you want. You can't see, you still don't get it. Whatever you bring me, it's not going to compare to Jesus doing what only your God can do. Can you show me someone besides Allah and Jesus, Allah and Jesus creating from clay and bringing life into that clay and making it a living being? That's astonishing. You're giving me some silly, superficial examples. But the examples that matter, that shows that Jesus is more than a man, let's ignore that. So here, I'm going to call your bluff. Show me someone other than Allah and Jesus, other than Allah and Jesus in the Quran that raises the dead. Show me someone other than Allah and Jesus that creates from clay and breathes into the clay and makes it come to life. Can you show me those examples? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Please. The child is going to raise someone from the dead. Okay, wait, wait, wait. This one. The hadith, the, the hadith, the you're going to go to hadith? Which part of Quran wasn't was clear? It's not an authentic hadith. You mean the same hadith that Jesus comes down and kills the Dajjal, who's been alive for 2,000 years? I'm going to use the hadith to embarrass you, but before you go to the hadith, in the Quran, show me where someone other than Allah and Jesus creates from clay and breathes life into it and gives life to the dead. I'll adjust the Dajjal part and it's going to backfire against you. Can you show me that? If we're going, no, there is none, but there is okay. 120,000 prophets. We are not okay, getting Where does the Quran say there's 120,000 so prophets? What we know, where no, does no the Quran say 120,000 prophets? What is that? Where does the Quran say 120,000 prophets? Hadith. 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 Okay. Hadith. Which, I know maybe to you the Quran is the Hadith, so let me say it three more times fast. Where does the Quran say? Where does, does the does okay? So now we got that fact. So the Quran doesn't say that, right? Doesn't say. It. Okay, now let's come back. So you're saying these hundred twenty thousand prophets were so unimportant that your God didn't bother to mention them, but He mentioned Jesus and highlights Jesus and ascribes to Jesus qualities that He doesn't give to anyone else. No. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. 
<laughs> oh, 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 yeah. argument here that, that because Allah doesn't mention the previous prophets. No, you didn't hear what before, I said. We don't know how long. Let me correct you again. You didn't hear what I said. You just sit there. Show me one prophet. You just the Red said, Sea like prophet. No, just, just do okay. this. If you want to use I'll the get there. I'll, I'll get there. Hold on. Breathe. <laughs> I'll get there. You just said that these 120,000 weren't so important to be mentioned by I didn't say that. You said it. You said but it. Jesus is so important. Not only is he mentioned, his mother is the greatest of all women, the only woman mentioned by name, who conceived and gave birth <clears throat> to Jesus as a virgin by the Spirit of Allah, who creates life like Allah does and raises the dead. But let's ignore that and go to these superficialities. So now let's go to Moses. Who actually split the Red Sea? You sure you read your Quran carefully? Was it Moses or did Allah do it when Allah showed up in a pillar of a cloud? This is the miracle of Allah. Okay. So who actually did it? This is the splitting of the Red Sea. Allah's, by Allah's permission is split okay. when he... Allah, uh, Allah actually split the Red Sea by calling in an east wind, right? Not the, the Red Sea, yes, Red Sea, I'm sorry. He, when Moses hit is the staff, a, when Moses hit the staff, Allah commanded the east wind to come and split the Red Sea. So it was Allah who did it at the beck and call or the intercession of Moses. But who actually Speaking created, can I finish the point? Who actually created clay, uh -huh. a bird from clay? In a chapter three of the Quran. Okay, but you're not listening. I'll get to the Ithni. Friend, don't tap that. So I know you're scared. I'm going to get to be Ithni Allah. It's going to embarrass you. Just be patient. Who actually fashioned the clay with his hands? Was it your Allah who came down and took the clay? Or was it Jesus? Uh, I have to go back to the verse. Chapter it three, verse 50. Who, who does, yeah. Jesus. Chapter three, verse 50. Yeah, okay. Okay. He actually fashioned it. Who actually breathed? Was it Allah from heaven went, or does it say Jesus breathed? Jesus, Jesus. Okay. So now let's go with Bithni Allah. So Allah permitted Jesus to take clay with his own hands, the hands of Jesus, and create with his own hands and use his own breath to make this bird come to life with Allah's permission. And you still don't see that Allah just made Jesus his partner in creating and giving life. This is a foolish argument. This is, yeah, okay. do you not understand by yeah, Allah's yeah, permission? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Allah didn't give permission, it wouldn't have happened. So you're just admitting Allah permitted Jesus to be his partner in creating and giving life, right? No. Because yeah, you just Are said you Allah saying, permitted, Allah right? Not... What's that? Allah permitted him, right? Allah let him do it. Okay, so let me go with what you're saying. Don't backtrack. Allah let Jesus create and give life in the same way that Allah created and gave life to Adam, yes? Yes. So you guys, you heard it, yes? He said yes. So Allah made Jesus a partner with him in creating and giving life. No. So Allah just committed no. shirk. Allahu Akbar. Thank you. No. You just said yes, he did. Allah gave Jesus the powers, whatever power. It doesn't Allah say he gave him the power. Allah. Didn't say that, don't twist. Be itni Allah does not mean uwa. Huwa is power. Oh. Bithni means permission. He permitted him. If but you even if he gave him the power. And disregard the whole Quran. Even, your hold opinion on, friend, don't run. Don't run because your Mohammedan friends here saying, I'm the one changing the subject because they're stupid. They don't see I'm on subject. Hey, so don't run. Listen. Your against you again. Don't Let me use your run. Against you hold again. on before you do. Friend, hold on before you do. I'm using your own terms against you. Even if okay, Allah gave running. him power. Even if Allah gave him power, you're still admitting Allah was pleased to give Jesus the power to do what only Allah can do so that we still end up with Allah making Jesus his partner and giving them power to do what only Allah can do. Good job. How does that refute me? No, didn't I explain to you already? Allah gives the job the power to bring life to death. Yeah. So... Even in the, the, the Dajjal you, that you're you? mentioning, why is the Dajjal? Let's go with the Hadith. That's not the Quran, but I'm going to run with you. I'm going to tap dance and run with you to the Hadith. Why is he called al Masih al Dajjal? And why is it that he can raise the dead? Allah gives him the power to raise the dead. So besides the problem with Allah giving him the power and how this implicates Allah, I'm not going to change the subject. Why? You're not hearing my argument. Why is he called al Masih al Dajjal, the false Messiah? Oh. And raises the dead, isn't it because he's trying to be like the Messiah? 
Yes, he's no, he's trying to claim he claims divinity. Well, you're making my yes. point. Why would he be called the false messiah and do the things that Jesus did, like raise the dead and then claim divinity? If that's not proof that Jesus, the true messiah, is God and raised the dead, why is he doing things if Jesus didn't do the, the same the, things and made the same claims so that Jesus is the real deal, but the false messiah is the fake counterfeit? What sense does it make to call him the false Messiah if he's not trying to act like the Messiah and do the things that Messiah does? So if he claims to be God and raise the dead, that means the Messiah, the real one, must have claimed to be God and raised the dead to prove it. You see how it backfired against you? Because Christians like you in that time who meet him are going to think he's the That's not my God. question. Says, oh. That's not my question. Let me repeat my question again. You were the one who made the stupid mistake of appealing to the, the Dajjal. And I told you it's going to backfire against you. So think twice before you bring up something. So let's take your argument. Don't change your argument. Stick with your argument. He's called in Islam, al Messiah, al Dajjal, meaning the false Messiah. Meaning the one who wants to be the Messiah and replace the Messiah. So he acts like the Messiah. Why then is he going to claim to be God and raise the dead if the true Messiah didn't claim to be God and raise the dead? This is his specific claim. No, no one said Nibir Isa claimed the same. You're not reading into it. Then why call him the false Messiah if he's not trying to imitate Jesus? You're not getting doesn't have any. I understand what you're trying to say, but... No, you don't, because you're not responding to me. This is the trial at the end of times. Okay, would an atheist would an atheist or agnostic, if they see this occurring, he's bringing people to life, would they not believe in him? This is called a trial you're not, the end of times. Not, oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Is this part of the Sunnah to be illiterate? When, you're not getting the point. Why I know is he called saying. the false Messiah? Why call him Messiah? Why not just call him a liar? Don't call him the lying messiah if he's not trying to act like the true messiah are you getting that point or no yes yes i understand what okay. you're trying to say so in what way is he acting like the messiah because he's the the jews believe he's going to be the messiah they, they believe a messiah okay. is on his the, way he's, and he's clearly going to be the false one it's no as as no that. no because the jew is not going to accept a one-eyed grotesque monster claiming to be the messiah no, Are they? One. If you read the Hadith, the one eye, it says 70,000 Muslims will follow him from, okay, from Iran. I'm going to end up hanging up on if you don't answer the question again. Let's try this again. In what way is he trying to be like Messiah Jesus? Because that's why he's called the false Messiah. Because he's going to try to imitate and mimic the true Messiah. How is he imitating and mimicking the true Messiah? Because... In, in Jewish scripture, they believe a Messiah is on the way. But in Jesus. Jewish scripture, the Messiah doesn't claim to be God or does he? Wait, wait. In Jewish scripture, does the Messiah claim to be God or no? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. Okay, so now it's no, going it to implode either. in your face again. Why then is he going to claim to be God if the Jewish scripture doesn't say Messiah is going to be God? Hello? Or then, or then just the Jews are going to follow him. If you you see, right up in notice the you keep changing the, the argument. You keep changing the argument. Let's go with your argument again. Because the Jewish scripture says Messiah is coming. But does the Jewish scripture say when Messiah comes, he's going to claim to be God? No. So why is he claiming to be God then? <clears throat> we don't know in what setting he is claiming to be God. We don't know if he's in, in the presence so of Jesus. If you don't know if what setting, if you don't know what setting, why did you appeal to a hadith? In order to overthrow what the Quran says. He's going to claim this. We don't know if he's talking to the Jews in this hadith. This so then it. why did you mention the Jews? See, you brought up the Jews. You see what it you're doing? You bring up the Jews, Jews I address the Jews. Then... Say what? 70,000 Jews, it is said in the hadith, are going so to then follow you, him. So then you brought up the Jews, stick with the Jews. Why then would he claim to be God and then 70,000 Jews follow him if the Jewish scripture doesn't say Messiah is God? Hello? Explain that to me. Look, man, you, you, you're not understanding what I'm trying to tell oh, you. I've understood you perfectly, and you keep digging the hole for Muhammad. Keep digging. All right. Look, so why, why again, will 70,000 Jews follow the false Messiah after he claims to be God if the Jewish scripture doesn't say Messiah is God? So we're back to square one. 
And okay, okay, just let me finish my point. Please. Stop interrupting me. Let me tell you so you can understand. I've understood you, but I'm, go ahead. I'm trying to tell you. So, we don't believe just Jews are following him. If 70,000 Jews are following him, <laughs> wouldn't he want to please them and tell them what they want to hear? If atheists so, are, are claiming, hey, yeah. if you can raise the dead in front so of So in us, light of social them. media, in light of communication, these Jews must be some stupid people because he's going to say to the atheists, I'm God, but to the Jews, he's going to say he's a man. And somehow the Jews and these, well, let me finish the point. Hello, let me finish the point. Somehow the Jews and the atheists who follow him won't be speaking to each other. So the Jews will never find out that this Messiah told these atheists he's God. Really? He told you he's God? No way. No. That's it. Really? Okay, dude? You, okay, is it impossible that Jews in the future would believe he is God if he claims this? Would they? Could they believe? But you appeal to the Jewish scripture, dude. Do you understand what your argument is, or do I need to walk you through your argument? You said the Jews will follow him because the Jewish scripture says Messiah is coming. My question in response to that is this. Let me repeat it again because you're not getting it. Let's try this again. Why would the 70,000 Jews follow a Messiah who's one eye and claims to be God if the Jewish scripture doesn't say Messiah will be God? You still didn't answer that question. Hey, Jews are easily deceived, man. They don't believe That's your answer? Prophet, then... Okay, man. What's that? Anyway, thank you, man. But it was a good conversation. I like you, buddy. You got my number. We'll call more. We'll talk more. But thank you. That was the answer. So the Jews are easily deceived. Thank you, boy. Thank you, my friend. We'll talk more about, okay? Maybe in the next week or something. All right. Yeah. All right. See you. Take care, buddy. Hey, you know what's sad today? Can I tell you what's sad? If, if, if. Hey, you know what's sad, guys? Can I tell you what's sad? No, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's sad. You just guys confirm what I've been saying for all this time. We got 600 people watching me debate a young Muslim man. Pray for him because he's young, he's naive, he's got a good heart, you can tell. We got 600 people to listen to me to debate. Why can't I get 600 people to come and listen to me talk about Jesus and the Bible? You guys have confirmed what I've been saying for the past several weeks. You know what you confirm? When we talk about Jesus, the doctrines of the Christian faith, the Holy Bible, if we get over 200, it's amazing. The moment we put something about Islam, we get droves of people, 600 800 1500 why 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 is that why can't we get over 600 to hear about the biblical teaching on the trinity the biblical teaching that jesus is the god man god in the flesh the holy spirit is a divine person the way of salvation wow guys <whistles> my friend you will not destroy Islam apart from the gospel of Jesus Christ. Islam cannot be destroyed by the wisdom of man or the power of man. Only the Almighty God can destroy Islam and save Muslims. So if you want to see Islam destroyed, preach the gospel, proclaim Jesus, and exalt the name of the Son of God, and the Holy Spirit will bring millions of Muslims out of Islam and destroy Islam for the glory of Jesus. Okay? But folks... Still, we had 600. Lord willing, I'm going to do a live stream later today. I hope I see 600 when I live stream. So God willing, in, in two hours, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going live with Al-Fadi. I'm going live with Al-Fadi. Sira International, C-I-R-A. That's two hours from now, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to talk about Jesus' deity, that Jesus is proclaimed to be God in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So join me. And Lord willing, after Al Fadi, God willing, I'll be doing a live stream on this channel, Shamunian. So subscribe, hit the like button, and join me. Lord willing, I'll see you in two hours. And then after that, on my own YouTube channel, where we're going to go live and talk about the Bible, about the Godhead, about the Father, about Jesus, about the Holy Spirit, about salvation, so we can know our own faith, know our own book, and know our own God and fall in love with our God. And may he forgive us and wash us in the blood of Jesus and save us from our flesh. We love you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Guys, see you in two hours on Al-Fadi's channel, Sira International, C-I-R-A International. 
I'll be joining him for a live stream. And after that, on my channel, subscribe, hit the like button, pray for that young man. The young man wasn't arrogant. The young man wasn't venomous. The young man wasn't blasphemous. He's on a journey, and I trust the power of the Holy Spirit will shake him and rock him and bring him to the feet of Jesus. Please, Holy Spirit, save him and save us for the glory of Jesus. See you guys in two hours. Take care. All right, welcome back, guys. I believe you were able to learn something new from this amazing debate. Let's know what you've learned in the comment section. And these Muslim guys, they are so used to dealing with dishonest scholars. They are so used to their shaykh telling the lies that when they are confronted with the truth with a honest person who knows what they are talking about, they cannot defend Islam and then they get angry. To be honest, it takes a lot to deal with this kind of guys. Respect the rules of the debate and answer simple questions, but they will never do that. There is a lot of fire burning silently. Forget the, the sentiment you see. Many of them are embracing the truth silently, but they don't want to come out to tell you. And then one of the major aspects of this debate is that the Quran confirmed the Bible to be true. That is, the, that it is the true word of God, but the follower of Muhammad are saying the word have been corrupted. The very word your prophet confirmed to be true. Are you better than your prophet? If you're not better than your prophet, then it means that you are a liar. And if it have been corrupted, then your prophet is a liar because he said the word of God cannot be corrupted. Muhammad confirmed this word that it cannot be corrupted. And if you are saying that the word has been corrupted, and if it is truly cor corrupted, then your prophet is a liar for saying that the word of God cannot be corrupted. And then the horrible way Muhammad died, the woman told him that if he eats out of the poisoned food and he did not die, then he is a true prophet. But if he died, dies as a result of the effect from the poison, then he is not a true prophet. But we all know how it ended, how he died from the effect of the poison. And this is another confirmation that Muhammad is a false prophet, that he is not a true prophet from God. Guys, let's know what you think about this debate in the comment section. And also don't forget to share, to like, and subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos like this. Thank you for watching. See you in our next video.